Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Roman Swoshowski, and uh, I work as a VP for Cloud Foundry Services at GrapeUp. Uh, today, I would like to tell you uh, a bit more about our work at GrapeUp and what we managed to do with uh, Cloud Foundry uh, platform in terms of its, its uh, routing features and capabilities. So it all started several months ago when we started to take a look at uh, the Cloud Foundry platform and then its possibilities in terms of routing. And we were wondering how to extend its capabilities in, um, in terms of adding new types of traffic it can support and also new types of applications it could support. So today I would like to share with you the, and show you the, the, the whole path we went through, uh, starting from the original idea and uh, um, how it evolved into uh, what we have right now. Uh, what we've built right now, which is uh, extensible architecture for, for custom um, routers capable of plugging in actually any custom TCP or UDP router. Uh, and I will also show you what are the next steps uh, for that and where we want to bring that and, and uh, what, what are the, uh, what's the, the idea to uh, move forward. Okay, but before we get to the TCP and UDP stuff, let me just give you a quick overview on what actually GrapeUp company is. So we are a software and and consultancy company. Uh, we provide, we specialize in, in designing and uh, building cloud native applications uh, in the first place. But aside from providing application development services, we also uh, provide generic uh, software related services around Cloud Foundry. Um, like installation, consultancy, configuration, uh, um, set up, also some customizations. Uh, we've been operating on, on the global market for uh, over 10 years now, so we have a, quite a vast experience with, uh, with software development. Uh, we were focusing so far in the North American uh, market, but uh, since last year we are also trying to build our awareness and then presence here in, in Europe. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm uh, right now responsible for the Cloud Foundry Services team in, in GrapeUp, uh, but also for overall for technology. Uh, so what technology company uses, uh, where we want to uh, offer that, the, the overall technology vision. Uh, currently, our major focus is the Cloud Foundry platform, but not only Cloud Foundry, but also the, the whole ecosystem of tools and technologies that um, is built around it. Okay, so. Enough uh, about Grape, uh, let's get back to point. So this is the question that uh, we ask ourselves and we are asked by our customers very often. So when, when we talked about Cloud Foundry, uh, what can it be used for and what types of systems, applications, solutions, what, what can you run on it? And uh, well, the answer could be you could run anything because you have all those possibilities. But uh, of course, there are certain types of applications that uh, can run out of the box on, on top of uh, the platform without much effort. And in the first place, and these are web applications, right? So these are pretty much technology agnostic. So the, the technology doesn't really matter here. It could be Java stack, um, applications based on the Java stack, like Spring apps. Uh, it could be JavaScript based applications, Ruby, Python, we have a whole bunch of different technologies covered by um, different types of build packs available in, in the platform. Um, and of course, we have uh, Diego support. Uh, uh, sorry, we have uh, Docker support in Diego. So actually, we, we could really run anything, right? We could just pack anything we want into a Docker image, uh, see if push it, and then it just works. Uh, but uh, the limitation of web applications is, is really they support only HTTP traffic, which is quite natural because, well, they are usually interactive. So the um, user can interact with them uh, via the web browser, and the web browser communicates over HTTP. So there's, of course, a bunch of non-HTTP applications which we would like to support. Uh, you might have seen uh, yesterday's uh, talk uh, from Shannon Khan from the TCP routing team, from the routing team, about uh, recent updates to the uh, TCP routing in Cloud Foundry. So he was showing those use cases, non-HTTP use cases. First of all, 
different various IoT protocols like uh, MQTT or MAQP and, and, and other. Uh, he talked about legacy workloads and also some non-persistent TCP applications, uh, TCP services. So these are, of course, uh, like extend uh, capabilities of the platform um, as compared to the to the web just the web applications. But these are definitely not all of non-HTTP applications we would like to support. So we have more. First of all, there are more IoT protocols that we would like to support, like MQTT for sensor networks or uh, the co-op communication. Uh, we could think about some media-related uh, solutions, media streaming or data streaming um, applications based on RTP support, uh, RTP transport. Uh, we could think uh, also about maybe gaming servers where the UDP transport is, well, primarily the basic type of, um, of transport used. Uh, or perhaps some, some solutions based on the SIP protocol, again, where uh, it uses the UDP uh, transport rather than the TCP. So to support all of them, we need this, right? So the conclusion uh, from our side was simple. Well, let's try to build it and add it to Cloud Foundry. So at GrapeUp, uh, we've been recently shifting from like generic software development to more cloud native application development. But at the same time, we have a, uh, like a vast experience and a big track record with building uh, different types of solutions as well. For instance, VoIP and unified communication solutions. So we're wondering, can we somehow combine those two areas of expertise and use, it, use them to, to, to actually uh, introduce UDP support into Cloud Foundry? OK. So Let's stop for a while and uh, do a quick retro on how routing actually works in Cloud Foundry. Uh, as you might know, uh, we have right now available two types of routing. We have HTTP routing and TCP routing. So the first one is quite simple. Uh, we have a Go Router component, which is a custom HTTP router implementation specifically for Cloud Foundry. It's written in Go, that's why it's called Go Router. Uh, and uh, it supports um, routing just the HTTP traffic and only on two ports, 80, port 80 for uh, HTTP and port 443 for HTTPS. Uh, internally, like this diagram shows like um, very, very sim simple architecture of, of the cloud, in cloud Foundry internals. So we have the whole Diego uh, runtime and additionally, uh, to the Go router, we have the route emitter component, which is responsible for uh, monitoring what's uh, monitoring desired and the actual other, other P states in Diego. Uh, so, to simplify that, the route emitter uh, checks what routes do we want in the platform, and if it detects some changes, it notifies Go router. Uh, with the updated routing table so that Go router can actually reconfigure itself and support new routes. Uh, for TCP routing, the current implementation, it's quite similar. Uh, yeah, again, Shannon was, was showing this, this very similar uh, slide yesterday. So uh, we, have, we have very similar architecture here. We have TCP emitter, which serves the same role. Uh, we have a TCP router, which is actual component responsible for uh, reconfiguring underlying HE proxy, uh, which actually does the TCP routing stuff. But we have additional component called routing API, uh, which is uh, like externalized uh, subsystem to, to uh, store and handle all routing tables and all routing definitions, routing rules. So the TCP emitter right now still monitors uh, what happens in uh, BBS, and once it detects uh, required change in the routing rules, it updates uh, entries in the routing API. And on the other hand side, TCP router uh, subscribes to certain events from the routing API, and then, of course, reconfigures the, the underlying HE proxy. So uh, TCP routing is purely port-based, where, um, of course, it's, it's, it's a layer 4 router. So uh, we, can tell him, we can tell it that. Uh, Okay, route all TCP traffic coming in on port, let's say 5,000, 
to my application, right? Um, okay, so this was a, a very quick overview of what we have right now. So the missing piece of the puzzle is, of course, UDP routing. Uh, it's not there yet, and uh, back then when we started just thinking about it, there were no plans uh, so far to, to add it. So we thought, okay, let's, let's try to build it somehow. So first of all, we wanted to define the goal, so what we actually want to build, which seems reasonable approach. Uh, we wanted it to be quite um, homogeneous, so, so, the, so that the user has uh, a unified experience with using all the, all the different uh, types of routing. So for instance, we should have, we thought that we should have uh, a separate um, components for, for each types of uh, traffic, and that the actual route definition should be quite similar. And the same uh, should be on the uh, CLI side, so that we can either do a CF push my app, which actually creates a, a, a standard HTTP route, but we should be able to uh, very easily define, okay, for this application I might want uh, a TCP type of route for with this part, or the UDP type of route for this part. Uh, so with that in mind, it looked like a very high level plan, but we thought, okay, maybe it's enough. We decided to give it a try and uh, build a prototype, and we did it the agile way, very agile, maybe a lightning speed. So what was the outcome? Uh, we built the, the, the first prototype, we based it directly on the existing, back then existing, um, routing release components. So what we have, what we had in, uh, in the TCP uh, routing. But we modified, slight, mod modified them slightly so that uh, it actually can handle additional configuration. Um, and it understands that we do not only um, expose a certain port, but also add with a certain protocol. Uh, we also extended it so that it now uses uh, two types of proxies for, for, actual, um, for routing the actual traffic. So HA proxy for HTTP and a new type of proxy pen for uh, TCP and UDP. And the internal architecture uh, looks more or less like that. So you may see that on the right hand side uh, there is still a similar uh, uh, architecture where we have a uh, Diego, we have the emitter component, which is now called CF emitter instead of TCP emitter, so that uh, it, it, um, because it actually supports not only TCP traffic anymore. We still have routing API, which serves the same role, but uh, on the left hand side, we have instead of TCP router, we have a CF router component, which was again extended to support UDP. And with this additional load balancer API layer, uh, which was actually kind of a, let's say, adapter layer to, uh, to, 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 to support uh, different type of proxies. And here we have a pen proxy and HA proxy uh, with uh, like additional um, interface layers on top of them to be able to communicate with the load balancer. So the whole flow was exactly the same as in the current TCP routing. So CF emitter monitors Diego, it detects route changes, uh, it updates uh, entries in the routing API server, and CF router subscribes to, uh, to routing API. And once it detects uh, or gets new updates, uh, it uh, updates, reconfigures appropriate proxy via the uh, CFPEN API or CFHE -H -H proxy API, uh, those, those additional adapter layers. It worked. It it worked. But unfortunately, just like with many R&D projects uh, where you know, we're trying to build something very rapidly and, and we're learning on our own mistakes, you know, back then the TCP routing was not really documented, so we had to like reverse engineer it to, to, to see how it works. Uh, yeah, and then there comes a moment where you start to see that everything we've just built is not as great as you thought it was, and it's really not as good idea as it initially was. And as you take a closer look, you notice that, well, all you've built is just this. So what's left in, 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 in such a situation? Well, you need to 
clean it up, right? So we clean it up, we threw it away, we did a retro, and we started over, right? So having in mind all the things we did wrong, uh, we thought, okay, maybe let's not do this as agile as before and think a bit more what actually we want to build. Okay, so we tried to prepare or think about some more exact requirements or detailed requirements for, for how this should work so that it, it really makes more sense and it's, and it's more uh, reasonable. So first of all, uh, what we want to achieve is to be flexible. We want to support any type of TCP or UDP protocol, either generic, generic traffic routing or, for instance, some, some uh, higher level protocols like, like uh, MQTT or co-op or anything else. Uh, additionally, we would like it to be extensible or pluggable so that you can take any proxy, like HA proxy or PAN on Nginx or even your own uh, custom implementation and just plug it into the architecture. Uh, of course, we want it to be scalable so that uh, it can support uh, a high volume traffic. Uh, extensible again, to, to, to be able to support custom implementations of, of um, proxies or routers, and easy to deploy because the prototype was quite difficult to set up. It required some, some manual, uh, well, lots of manual steps and then some tinkering to actually make it work. So, well, eventually we would like, to be, we would like it to be deployable with Bosch and, and um, automated. So, with... Uh, all that in mind, we've come up with a new architecture, uh, which again is slightly similar, but uh, different in a way that we externalize the whole uh, router component to be more self-contained. Uh, so again, the CF emitter and routing API still serve the same role, but on the left-hand side, we have the CF router, which is uh, like more generic uh, from one hand side, but we have this uh, triple X router, which is which is the actual adapter layer, uh, allowing to plug in any uh, router executable, which is like HA proxy or, or PAN or or Nginx or whatever else. Uh, of course, uh, this is this is just a template, right? So uh, eventually we would have like CF router, and then uh, for instance. Uh, HA proxy router adapter, and then at the very bottom, HA proxy. And it can route something more than just triple X traffic. So, uh, yeah, with that, uh, we thought, okay, so now we have a complete set, right? Because we can support TCP and we can support UDP with PAM at the bottom. And additionally, we could even build our own HTTP routing, right? And replace the Go router, which is built into Cloud Foundry, uh, which is not necessarily required because, well, Go router works well, but uh, the, the, the limitation it has is it's, it's only uh, the fixed port, the port 80 and N443. So with a custom uh, HTTP router, uh, we could possibly route or define a route with, with any port, any input port. Uh, so, so in general, it seems really like a, a, a complete set to support all those different types of uh, non-HTTP use cases. For instance, yeah, the the uh, the COPE, the, the the IoT protocols. So all the all the um, applications I uh, I talked in the more in the beginning. But to be honest we need to answer the question, is it really complete right now? Like, I'm sure that uh, you're also wondering, okay, so does it mean that we right now have a production grade UDP support in Cloud Foundry? Well, that's not entirely true because this is still a work in progress. Uh, what we want to do next with that? Well, first of all, it's, it's available in, in our Bitbucket um, uh, account, so you can just go there and then see the code. 
Uh, again, we are still uh, working heavily uh, on that. So what what we're trying to do right now uh, to polish it a little bit so that it's um, more like plug and play type of thing, because right now uh, still it's not fully automated. Uh, preparing Bosch releases is a pain. Uh, yeah, the guys from the team uh, can <laughs> can prove that. Uh, and uh, yeah, what's what's also important? Uh, we originally forked the the code base from uh, Open Source Cloud Foundry version two three eight, but to actually implement the UDP support, we modified it quite heavily. So right now, uh, the the version that's available it's uh, two four three, as far as I remember. I think it was, re it was released last last week, uh, and uh, the. So the version we have with the UDP support is not entirely compatible with the newest version. So this is again something we need to uh, figure out how to um, yeah, easily merge uh, the new upcoming changes from the mainstream to, uh, yeah, to this solution. Uh, yeah, but hopefully uh, we'll be able to, to integrate um, our changes into the uh, open source version uh, in the near future, uh, or at least uh, if not integrated entirely, uh, we would definitely like to share it with the community and then see also yeah, feedback from the community, uh, see some opinions if it's really something that uh, you think is required uh, in, in the platform. Uh, my feeling is that it is needed because um, it will definitely extend um, the, the, the capabilities of the platform itself. So we can now see that uh, we are building more and more types of or types of applications, types of solutions, and we are putting them into Cloud Foundry. And with this additional uh, type of traffic supported, our our possibilities here are even uh, even bigger. Uh, okay, so I think that's it. Uh, that I would like to thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, I'll be glad to, to answer them. Now I think we have a few more minutes left. Uh, OK. For the TCP? Just for TCP. Uh, well, we thought that uh, it would be easier to actually implement, to use pen proxy for both TCP and UDP routing because they're quite similar and the actual interfaces on the implementation side, uh, they were just easier to implement. But there are no um, whatsoever reasons that you cannot use HA proxy for TCP in terms of, I don't know, performance or, or things like that. Because, yeah, yeah, exactly. Any other? Yes? Mm, actually, we've we've modified quite a bit of, of Cloud Foundry, including Cloud Controller, but also a, a whole bunch of components from the Diego runtime itself. So, uh, yeah, that that's what I mentioned. That those those are quite heavy modifications. Um, that's why it's still not kind of a plug and play uh, solution, but we'll try to to make it more. Um, Less coupled with with you know the the actual um, uh, Cloud Foundry uh, architecture. So right now, uh, yeah, I think we we've modified more than half of Diego components and Cloud Control as well. So yeah, these are really really heavy uh, changes in the uh, in the whole platform. Yes. Uh, not yet. Uh, I've talked to, to Shannon, uh, and uh, yeah, right now I think as we share the, the, the code base, uh, I would be more than, than glad to, to actually be able to yeah, somehow contribute it to the, to the mainstream. So yeah, I'll, I will definitely uh, try to, to connect with, with the team and uh, yeah, share this work with them to be able to, to integrate it. Okay. So I think 
Uh, that's it for, for now. Thank you very much. Uh, and if you, if you would like to... Um,